It's like home for the holidays, and for one Lima family, that rings true this year. Alexis Arnold was with them as they captured a heartfelt reunion. Where is that army boots? Walking down the stairs. It's not him. It's not? Watching, waiting. Tammy and Andrew Vonglis have been counting down the seconds for their son's return home. 610 seconds. <laughs> It's been four months since Cole Carpenter left for basic training at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, in the Army National Guard. It's hard to describe, but just the whole sense of him not being there, and even though I knew he was safe, obviously he's just in basic. It's, it's just concerning for a parent because you don't know what they're going to go through. I'm just happy for him. He's a good kid. Just turned 21 Friday, so you know he'll be home now. He can celebrate his birthday with his twin brother. After much anticipation, finally the moment they've been waiting for. I think that's him. That's him. Here he comes. To Carpenter's surprise, not just mom and dad and his twin brother, but his close friends and a TV crew too. I did not expect all of that at all. I was, it was amazing to see. That's not fair at all. <laughs> I knew it. It's the boots. A special reunion for brothers who've shared a bond since birth. I miss the kid. He's been, I mean, it's the longest he's been gone since we were born. While home, Carpenter says he plans to spend time with family and relax. And that's really all I could ask for. Um, I don't really need anything else. It's, it's fantastic for him to be home because I know how much he wants to be here. I'm just proud of him. Glad he's home. There's a lot of work to be done in two weeks that he's home before he goes back. A perfect present for the family of the young soldier who returned home just in time for Christmas. Now, hospitals are already at capacity and they are delaying some elective surgeries. As we hear from Carla Rodner tonight, more stringent measures could be coming. Carla? Yeah, Strong Hospital says it could be forced to put essential surgeries on hold if it can't keep up with an increase in COVID cases and hospitalizations. It's really not a question of whether, it's a question of when. Dr. Michael Mendoza says the Omicron variant will soon surge in Monroe County. Its symptoms can be mild, but not for everyone. Because of the surge, we can inst and still anticipate having many more people who will need hospital beds. Hospital leaders are preparing their systems already pushed past their limits. Capacity at, um, uh, at the hospitals within Rochester Regional Health remains a challenge. That's a day-by-day -day matter of work. Um, our ICUs are very full, and so we hope that our employees will stay healthy and will be able to help us work through um, uh, an Omicron surge if there is one. At Strong Hospital, our system is stressed. Dr. Michael Apostolakis says they have had to delay close to 200 surgeries to make room for COVID patients. I can tell you some of our patients don't believe their care is non-essential and it's being delayed. There has even been discussion of the worst case scenario of delaying essential surgeries. And people um, um, have to think about, you know, what if we don't have an ICU bed and you have a heart attack or you have a stroke or you need major surgery and we can't provide it. This is preventable. While a surge in cases of the Omicron variant may be inevitable, Dr. Mendoza says it can be somewhat controlled by people wearing masks along with getting vaccines and boosters. People who are boosted will stand a much better chance of not only avoiding the infection, but certainly avoiding any of the more severe complications. But uh, as the county executive said, short term and long term, right now we have to be thinking about the short term just to get us through this holiday season. And then once we get past uh, you know, the winter time and, and the holidays, we'll be in a position to reevaluate. Dr. Mendoza says he is continuing to keep a close eye on the data and hopes to learn more about the Omicron variant and the impact it will have here in Monroe County in the next few weeks. Come January, businesses with 100 or more employees will be required to have those employees all vaccinated. Yeah, this is a federal mandate. 13 UM's Chase Howell spoke to the CEO of Wegmans today to find out how they plan to enforce what has been controversial for some people. Chase? Well, so far, so good was the attitude for Wegman CEO when it comes to vaccinations, saying its staff is mainly all vaccinated ahead of the January 4th vaccine mandate. As for an exact number of employees vaccinated, it was unclear. 
get your COVID-19 vaccine or potentially lose your job. President Biden's vaccine mandate for companies with 100 or more employees will start right after the new year. This affects over 100 million Americans and businesses, including some right here in Rochester. CEO of Wegmans, Colleen Wegman, says the company is already getting a taste of the mandate in New York City, where next Monday, private companies will start requiring every employee to be vaccinated. Now there is a mandate in New York City, so we're going through that with our Brooklyn store, and um, it's going over really well. Wegman says it's encouraging employees to get vaccinated by having one-on-one -on -one conversations with them so it can specifically address any concerns or hesitations about getting the vaccine. When it comes to vaccination rates for staff, the head of Wegman says the company is well above the national average. Our people have been so close to this since day one, so we're, we're really proud that most of our people are vaccinated already. Chief Medical Officer of Rochester Regional Health, Dr. Robert Mayo, says the federal vaccine mandate makes sense, agreeing with President Biden's January 4th vaccine mandate. It certainly makes sense to me that the more people who are vaccinated throughout the community, the better the community is going to be. CEO for the Rochester Chamber of Commerce, Robert Duffy, is urging businesses to comply with any and all mandates, saying the fate of them staying open is in the owner's hands. Do you want to fight the mask or be shut down for three months or four months or six months with no income coming in? I think that choice is pretty easy. And starting January 10th, OSHA will begin issuing penalties for companies that don't comply with a vaccine mandate.